James from Love My Pups and My Breeder Supply. So today I want to talk about uh, canine herpes virus, CHV1. Um, if you raise puppies, you may have a problem one day where you have a litter that's doing great for the first few days and all of a sudden you start to lose puppies. And over the period of maybe a week, you might lose the entire litter. And puppies have been fine and all of a sudden they show symptoms where they're not nursing, uh, they're getting cold, they're whining, and then they die. And it's a really sad situation. So sometimes the vet will say fading puppy syndrome. And that to me doesn't mean very much. It's, it's just like, you know, it's, a, it's not a diagnosis. It's just saying you've got problems with the puppies. But it very likely could possibly be that your puppy has been infected with CHV1, canine herpes virus. It's the same similar virus that humans get. It's the same thing that gives you shingles, can give you gentle herpes, can give you, you know, a, a thing on your mouth. The kind that your dog gets is not transmittable to human beings. This is not something where we need to panic because we think that we're gonna get the whole family's gonna come down with CHV1. That's not happening. So it's not transmittable to human beings, but it is very transmittable to dogs. And it's transmittable sexually, and it can be transmitted by uh, mucus, nose-to-nose -nose contact, uh, are ways that it's transmitted. And some people say that it may be as prevalent as 84% of the dogs out there have CHV1. An adult dog with CHV1 won't show any outward signs. It's a healthy dog. It might possibly have a kennel cough. It might possibly have what looks like a bit of a cold. CHV1 is only infectious at certain times for a dog, not all the time. So you can do a titer test, a blood test, where you can test for it, find out whether your dog has it. The problem is a single test by itself does not tell you that your dog doesn't have it. You have to do a test like three weeks apart, a couple, two or three times to find out whether your dog has it. And just because your dog has it doesn't mean your puppies are gonna get it either. In fact, I've read quite a bit that says that a dog that has given CHV1 to its puppies once won't ever give it to them again. I don't fully understand how that works, um, but you know, it's probably something to do with antibodies in a dog. Again, I, it may be due to the antibodies that's in the mother's colostrum. I'm not sure exactly how that works. But anyway, um, it, it is a problem. And so part of it is, how do you tell if you've got it? What can you do to prevent it? And what can you do if your dogs, your puppies are being afflicted with it? So the first thing is, how can you prevent it? Well, it's difficult. I mean, one thing is, is we don't take our dogs out to dog parts where there have been a lot of other dogs. So it worries me going to places where they're like PetSmart. We don't take, you know, you see people in PetSmart with their dogs. We don't do that because there's lots of other dogs there. You know, it's a nose to nose thing. It's not an airborne thing, but a dog could sneeze and, you, and your dog could get it or cough. Um, dog parts, the same thing. And even the vet, you know, the vet, lots of dogs, sick dogs go to the vet. So I think that's another potential place that you could uh, get CHV one of your dogs. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to your vet, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that you know you can take some precautions. The kind of thing that we do is we take our puppies to the vet, we take our puppies to the vet in one of our incubators, and uh, they're inside this, and they're not exposed to any other animals that have been in the, in the doctor's office. And when we uh, take our puppies out for the doctor to examine them, and they go on their stainless steel table, we wipe the stainless steel table off before the puppies go on it. So a certain amount of precaution is just like us, you know, washing hands, now we do with human beings so they don't get a cold, same kind of thing. All right, so the next thing is, is that you could do a blood test. If your dog has it, there is a vaccination that's available in Europe. It's not available in America. The FDA has not approved it, and it's not sure quite exactly how effective it is anyway. So if your dog's got it, that's just the way that it is. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't breed your dog, um, but it does mean that if you've had a problem with fading puppies in the past, you've got to be aware of it for the future. So then the question is, what do you do if you think you've got uh, fading puppies, canine herpes virus? So there's two treatments that I'm aware of, and one of them I actually was experienced myself many, many years ago. I bought a Labrador that was bought pregnant, and after I'd bought it, the customer said, hey, that dog might have canine herpes virus. So one of the things that you can do is canine herpes virus, the virus itself, does not live very easily outside a body. It's easy to get rid of with, with the um, antiseptics, with the bleach, and <clears throat> it does not like temperatures above 104 degrees. So what you do 
is if you've got a fading puppy, you put it in an incubator, which of course I'm having a mild plug for my product here. This one works great, we manufacture it. And you can see here, this is in Fahrenheit, 40.5 degrees, that is about 105 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 140 degrees is, is actually 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So you just put your puppy in here and you keep its temperature up to 105 degrees and you've got a good chance that you can help the puppy out significantly. The most susceptible time is puppies that are one or two days old. And after they're a week old, they're probably much more likely to survive this. Um, so if I had a litter of puppies where I thought that I actually had um, a canine herpes virus affecting them, I would immediately quarantine the puppies that showed any signs of it and get them into an incubator and see if you could help them out. So I've actually got two different incubators. I want to just talk about these very quickly. We're not really talking about my product, but anyway. This one here is an incubator. You set the temperature. It comes with a 12 volt power source. It's very safe. Uh, it also comes with a car adapter. So you can go on a trip to the vet and just plug it into your car. And I now have, I'm just gonna move that out of the way. And I now have a bigger version of it. So here's the big version. So the big version, considerably larger. And uh, I just unplugged it. Guess what though? The great thing about these things is when you plug it back in, it remembers how it was set last time. And there we are, 40.7 degrees. So again, this is set right at the right temperature for a puppy that you want. It's good for a puppy period. And I've got a heat gun over here. We'll just try that out real quick. So we're just going to plonk this and open this thing up. And by the way, the lid is removable, but you don't need to pick it up by the lid. Take a picture of that there, Tammy. 41 degrees. So that's about 106 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, much bigger area if you've got lots of puppies. If you've got bigger dogs, like I do Frenchies. Frenchies are fine, the smaller one, great for Pomeranians and Yorkies and Chihuahuas. But if you had Labradors and English Bulldogs, the bigger one's better. So one way, get the temperature up to 105 degrees or hotter. Maintain them at that temperature, and you have a good chance that they maybe will do a lot better. Even massive puppies will go in there. Yeah, if, yeah, if big puppies. German Shepherd. Enough. So the other thing is, I don't know much about this, I've never done it, but is. Goats. <laughs> yeah. The other thing you can do is give your puppies whole plasma. And you have two ways you can do this. So, how much whole plasma do you give? You give about three cc's of whole plasma for a pound puppy weight, uh, and you do that. Um, you can do that for the first couple of days after they're born orally. And you can go collect blood from your dog, spin it down, by the way, on my breed of supply, I sell to centrifuges, spin it down, it separates the clear fluid on top from the blood, which is the plasma, you siphon that off, and you put it in the fridge, and you freeze it. And frozen plasma will keep for years in the fridge. So you can collect plasma, and then it gives your, your dogs more antibodies from mum. It's also a good treatment for puppies that haven't nursed and haven't got mum's colostrum, you can give them plasma. So there's, you could buy plasma by the way, it's about $14, $15 for I think 10 cc's. So you could buy frozen plasma as well. Um, and I don't know, you can go Google that and find out where. Never done that, haven't done this either, haven't, haven't needed to, but I have people, customers of mine who tell me about this. So you know, this might be treatment that's worth looking into. Certainly you need to have a centrifuge you're gonna do it yourself. And if you do it yourself, it's, 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 it's free, basically. Uh, and, you, and I think that, personally, I would be much happier giving plasma from my dog versus plasma I'm buying over the internet. I don't know what dog it's coming from, but I'm, you know, again, I don't know the science behind it, so that may not be the best of advice. But anyway, again, just to recap here, make sure that your dog doesn't go to places where it can get infected if possible. If you think you've got a problem, go have a blood test done, at least two of them to find out whether your dog really does have canine herpes. Uh, if you think you've got it, get yourself on board with an incubator and then maybe a centrifuge so that you can do a separation of blood and key plasma. Uh, and I think those things can, can significantly increase the possibility of overcoming what's a, really a horrible situation to be in. I don't guarantee that's going to fix it, but it certainly it would, it would help your odds of a puppy surviving. And puppies who've got canine herpes virus, they're not all destined to die. But the problem is if you don't do anything, they very likely will die. So anyway, my breed of supply, 
lovemypups.com. Give us a shout out on Facebook if you like us on our YouTube and uh, good luck with your puppy breeding. Is that mybreedersupply.com? Yes, it's my, it's all one word, mybreedersupply, singular, mybreedersupply.com. Or love my pups, www.lovemypups.com, lovemypups.com. Thanks for looking at my video. Bye, everybody.